I'm Biresh Panerjee. Welcome to DW News Asia. Glad you could join us. Thailand's prime ministership remains up for grabs after parliament rejected the lead contender for the job. Peter Lim Jaron Rat led his Move Forward party to victory in the May polls. But his promises to reform laws governing the monarchy have placed him at odds with Thailand's conservative polity. Especially the 250 members of the military-appointed Senate, most of whom did not support his candidature. Still, he says he's in the running and parliament will vote again next week. Here's more on the man that would be prime minister. At the age of 42, Peter Lim Jaronrat is 30 years younger than Thailand's current leader. But there is one other key difference between them. Prayut Chan Ocha led a military-backed government criticized for harassing activists and critics. Peter wants to build a democracy. Peter entered politics in 2018 after spending about a decade as a businessman. He has a master's in public policy from Harvard University and an MBA from MIT. In May 2023, he led his Move Forward party to a stunning victory at the polls. The sentiment of the era has changed and it's right. It was the right timing that uh, people have uh, been through enough of last decade in the past decade and today is a new day and hopefully it's full of bright uh, sunshine of hope going forward. Peter has generated excitement among young people. He echoes many of their frustrations growing up under a military-backed government and under the shadow of the monarchy. Under Thailand's criminal code, anyone found to have disrespected the monarchy can end up in jail for several years. Peter's campaign to be PM hinged on abolishing that law. He also wants to scrap compulsory military service to get more young people into the workforce and boost the economy. I promise all of you that when we wake up each day, we will fight for every single one of you. You might have given up. You might feel hopeless. You might feel like you never exist in this country, like nobody has ever seen you or even heard you. Today, you have proof that anything is possible in our country. Since winning at the polls, Peter has faced many hurdles. Among them was a call from the Election Commission to suspend Peter for allegedly breaking campaign rules, which would essentially block him from becoming PM. But the man driving Thailand's demand for change seemed unfazed. I want to send this message to the people. If you're not backing down, I will not back down as well. Joining me now for more context on this is Thai political scientist Janjira Sumbat Punsiri. Janjira, I suppose the main question I really have is what happens next in Thailand? Because 13 of the 250 members of the Senate voted for Peter Lim Jaron Ronrat. Now, given his election promises, can he at all receive more support from the Senate by next week? Well, there are a few scenarios. Um, what is quite likely uh, within next week is that there may be another vote for um, for him. Um, and this time, I think um, between now and then, there could be some negotiation whether or not um, the party move forward can revise its policy promises, especially regarding um, the royal defamation law amendment. Um, and I think if um, that is possible, there could be more votes for Pita. So that's next week. But I think um, the dilemma for the party right now is that um, this is a very um, one of the first non-conformist uh, parties in Thailand, which is very uplifting. But a downside is that I'm afraid that the party would not want to compromise its policy stance. So that would create another parliamentary crisis. And I think the second scenario could be that Pua Thai might step in to prevent any formation of the minority government, so to speak, which basically is the, um, the, the ruling party uh, coalition from the last government. 
Isn't it in Pyotai's interest as well that uh, move forward potentially forms the government so that Thailand sees some sort of uh, political change and reform? Absolutely. Um, I, I think it's, it's um, difficult for Pyotai to advance its interest because um, it's actually not Pyotai's character and the party may lose popularity amongst its constituents to basically be seen as betraying, um, move forward, right? But so I think Pyotai has to wait for that right moment that it could step in. But Indeed, I mean, um, without Pertai's leadership, I think it would be quite difficult to maintain um, the the results from the last election. And basically, I'm just saying that um, in the sense that the opposition could lead the ruling uh, coalition. So Pertai has to do this in the you days know, we're to we're talking about Peter Lim Jaron. I, I always mispronounce his name. I'm so sorry. Peter Lim Jaron Rad from the Move Forward Party, and and the and the People's Mandate that he won. I mean, beating expectations. This is somebody that the people of Thailand chose. At the end of the day, can Parliament actually choose to completely ignore the People's Mandate? Well, Thai policy. Thai politics, sorry, it's not always about people's mandates. And I think we have to be realistic here. Um, what we've seen in the country for the past two decades is the struggle between exactly the people and the elites. And the parliament consists of um, the lower house and the upper house. And basically the lower house may represent the people, but the upper house does not. And so um, we have to see if the upper house can override um, the lower house um, ability to represent um, people's voices or not. But all in all, I think now we are witnessing that struggle again between the majority and the elite minority in this country. Is this a pivotal moment for Thailand, Janjira? Indeed, absolutely. I think um, this election um, is one of the most crucial political moments in Thailand. Um, this is the second election after the coup. We know that. Um, the, I think if we could somehow allow the democratic process of um, governance and basically of ruling um, the country to survive this election, then we can say something that Thailand is moving forward or toward democracy. Is there a chance of violence literally on the streets in case Peter Lim Jaron Rat does not become prime minister by next week? I'm afraid, I don't want to use the word violence. Um, and to be clear, um, Move Forward supporters have been um, uh, protesting, um, basically engaging in street politics without violence for, for years. Um, of course, we would see um, the return of street protests. But what, what I would want to see is the balance between um, these um, street protests and um, parliamentary mechanisms that would have to lead us through this turmoil. We'll uh, leave it there uh, for the time being. But thanks so much for joining us today, Janjira Sumbat Punsuri, and bringing us, giving us some context on this very complex problem. Thanks so much. Peter Lim Jaronrat's Move Forward Party caused a storm in Thai politics with its election win in May. Now, one lawmaker is hoping that win will transform into governance and refresh not just the country, but his business as well. Pulling a beer and pulling off a surprise victory. For this beer-loving lawmaker, these two things just go together. Taupi Pop Lim Jalangong is a bar owner in Bangkok and a member of the progressive Move Forward Party, the newcomer in the Thai political system. The party hopes to form the next government after winning the most seats in the May 14th general election, led by Prime Minister candidate Peter Lim Chalunlat, who this lawmaker believes can deliver the changes needed in Thai politics. Even to this day, my dream is not in being a politician. I want to be a brewer, 
But in order to be a brewer in this country, you need to become politician first and check the law. So you can brew beer and you know, for, uh, follow my dream career. At the moment, Thailand's tough alcohol laws favor just two big companies. Small independent breweries have no chance. Once in government, Move Forward wants to push through a bill to break up the country's $14 billion alcohol duopoly. The party's reform plans are so ambitious that experts give Move Forward only a small chance to make it into government. It's, it's not only about demonopolizing the you know, beer business or liquor business, but it's also about that all these liquor businesses have a very close connections with the military leaders and political parties. So by dis destructing them also means it would destruct the you know, patron-client relationship that we have, that they have with some certain parties or military figures as well. They are the ones who actually, you could say, that fund all the big parties in Thailand. The party's plan to reform Thailand's royal defamation laws is also controversial. It's another key reason why Peter Lim Chalunlat's coalition faces resistance from the military-appointed 250-member Senate. In a first vote, the Move Forward leader failed to secure enough votes to become the new Prime Minister. In the upper house, only 13 senators voted for him. If it's a win or, or lose everything situation, because if we lose this time, the establishment will stay in the power like, for long and you know, they will get rid of people hope for change. And I don't know when this kind of momentum we will come back again. The microbrewer turned politician says this is a turning point in Thai history.